Welcome to a tutorial of it on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to review using Cascading Style Sheets (CSS) with HTML as part of Sugarcube 2.36. So we've been moving through a number of videos now by looking at using HTML elements, hypertext markable language elements, along with your attributes to work with three different macros within Sugarcube: the prepend, replace, and append macros. And these work like the sister macros we've already seen of link prepend, link replace, and link append. However, when we work with prepend, replace, and append, we're working with selectors. And I introduce selectors by demonstrating that we can select various HTML elements based on their attributes. Attributes are data within the elements themselves. And we looked at two key attributes that are the most common within HTML elements and those we use with selectors. We looked at ID for identification, some type of unique name for a particular element. And we also looked at class for classification, for one or more possible elements within some type of passage or greater web page. As we finally now move into cascading style sheets, CSS, we can finally see where the term selectors originated, and it originates with CSS. When HTML was originally invented, it was just a markup language, a second half of that acronym. So based on an existing document, it was marked up by adding elements to the page that described its presentation. For many years, there wasn't a way to make the presentation more than just hyperlinks and paragraphs and other things. As cascading style sheets was added to work with HTML, this really changed the presentation of information for web pages. And in fact, we see evidence of it right here. Twine would not be possible without the web language cascading style sheets. It describes the presentation of various HTML elements. And this is a web page right in front of us using CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, to change the presentation of various HTML elements right in front of us. We are using CSS. When we're working with Sugarcube, we can also do the same thing. Because as I've mentioned multiple times, Sugarcube is sitting on top of Twine, which is sitting on top of HTML. So any web languages that work with HTML, and there are multiple languages that do, CSS and JavaScript being among them, we can also work with those web languages as well to change the presentation or even change actions as we'll get into by looking at JavaScript while we're working with Sugarcube. So let's talk about in this video working with CSS. Now I'm going to preface before I go any further in this video that Cascading Style Sheets, CSS, is a language all into itself. It has a very large number of things within it and a large number of possible rules and a large number of combinations, some are more aesthetically pleasing than others, and I can't possibly cover the entirety of a web language in an under 15 minute video, so I'm not even going to attempt it. I will cover one name within or one rule within CSS and we'll talk about how CSS works and then we'll revisit it in an example video by looking at multiple rules together, but again, I can't possibly cover an entire language in under 15 minutes, and I'm not going to attempt to. So let's talk about the language a little bit as we work into how we even use it to work with Twine, in particular how we work it, how we use it to work with Sugarcube 2.36. So as a language, it has a number of different concepts that we will see quite frequently. And these are styles and rules, the two main concepts within the language. A style is a collection of rules, and a style is defined first with a selector, why it was introduced in an earlier video, and then a set of rules that apply to that selector that will then be selected, applied to other elements within the HTML itself. So if we're looking at Twine and we want to start to work with cascading style sheets, CSS, we go to the story and then style sheet option right here. And notice it says CSS entered here will override the default appearance of your story. So this is applied story-wide, but remember, based on the selectors we now know about, working with ID, identification, and class classification, we can start to pick out individual things that we want to be styled in a particular way. So let's talk about styles. I mentioned their work with selectors and then a set of rules. So we write selectors as we've seen. So if I was looking for something that has the ID of, this is the hash, let's say special, 
And then I want to write a series of rules that applies to this particular style. And these rules, again, are part of the larger language of CSS, of which, again, there are lots and lots and lots of possible rules. It's a language unto itself. There is at least one common rule that we pretty frequently see when we want to work with text, and that is the rule color. The rule color allows us to define different colors of the text and how it will be presented to, in this case, readers as part of interactive stories. So we define these rules using open and closing curly brackets around a set of rules where generally each rule is on its own line. And so let me go ahead and write that for you. It will generally look like this. Now you may see things written this way with the rules written like this, or you might see rules written like this. Both are perfectly valid. Again, the rules are just defined within the curly brackets and are associated with some type of selector. So let's look at rules. I want to use the color rule. So I write the word color, and then I use a colon. So as you'll see with all rules within CSS, they're written in name value pairs. That is the name of the rule goes in front of a colon and its value goes after the colon, and then the entire name value pair ends with a semicolon. Pretty common to a number of other programming languages of which CSS is borrowing ideas from. So I want to use color and I want to define how some type of text or whatever element I want to select will be colored in a particular way. Well, within a CSS, there are 140 named colors and then the possibility to use any of the billions of colors that web browsers can represent and monitors can show to readers. I won't necessarily get into how to present billions of them. This is very easily found with some web searches looking into and learning CSS, but let's look into some of the 140 named colors. A pretty common color we might want to use is let's just use red. And I'm going to end this with a semicolon. So we have here a style. It starts with a selector, how to find the thing it's going to apply to. Then it has some collection of rules, in this case, just one rule. And rules are written in name value pairs with a colon between the name and the corresponding value. So in this case, I'm interested in color, and I'm interested in one of the named colors that are within CSS, red. So find an element with the ID of special, make its text red, and this applies story-wide. So over here in the start passage, I have a division right here, a div element with the ID of special that I pre-prepared. And when we run this, the text will be read. So let's go ahead and see this text will be read. Well, let's say I didn't necessarily want red. Maybe I wanted green. So let's go back to story, style sheet, and change red to green. Close, build, play, now it's green. Notice any time we change it, SugarCube will go through the work of looking at and applying those styles first before it runs any content within the story. So there are many, many, many rules within Cascading Style Sheets CSS available to us when working with HTML. There are many online courses for learning CSS, many online resources for learning CSS, and again, I can't possibly cover an entire web language in a relatively short video, and again, I'm not really going to attempt to. But what this video shows is as we start to better organize content within our passages using HTML, as we've been doing across the last few videos, using things like divisions, using the paragraph element to better organize content, we can begin to apply styles collections of rules within CSS to then change the presentation of that content. So not only are we organizing it in a better way, we're also changing the presentation correspondingly. Because as we've seen now when working with the prepend, replace, and append macros, we can access and change the content of those corresponding elements, generally with the replace macro, replacing the internal content, but we can also prepend and append content as well. So by working with our knowledge of HTML, not only can we, again, better organize, we can now use the macros we have knowledge of, the prepend, replace, and append macros. And we can also now, with our additional knowledge of cascading style sheets, CSS, change the corresponding presentation of elements by creating styles, using selectors within those styles to find those elements, then creating a collection of rules, 
each of which has a name value pair ending in a semicolon and enclosing the entire collection of rules within open and closing curly brackets, defining them within the story style sheet section of Twine when we're editing within Twine, and then applying the styles throughout our story as we use them. Now, I want to close this video by pointing towards some resources I highly recommend if in particular you're interested in working with Sugarcube or working with the Harlow story formats within Twine. And those are Grimm's tutorials. So there's two different things I'm going to link in the description of this video, two different existing materials, and an ongoing Patreon to support work towards this end. I don't really cover CSS as part of my Twine videos. Somebody else has existing written materials, Grimm does, that I highly recommend people go check out. So I'm going to include those links in the description of existing works you can go purchase or existing Patreon you can go contribute to to better learn some existing styles, some existing rules within those styles, to really shape how you present stuff within Sugarcube. It's not a topic I'm going to particularly cover within this series, but again, those resources cover so much more in depth than I will ever get to. Thanks for watching.